Uh, my focus is, is using the, the 2012 NES study, which uh, asked a whole series of questions on uh, use of partisan news media and other news media and other media, um, specifying individual commentators, individual outlets, and so forth, newspapers, radio shows, and uh, it was a kind of a really rich um, um, uh, collection of responses that you could look at and, and start to play with. So I thought, okay, I can make a paper out of this. And it turns out it worked out pretty well. Obviously, 2012 is an interesting election to look at. It was the most polarized electorate we've ever had, at least in the history of the NES. That was talked about this morning. It's, uh, it's clear on, uh, on every dimension. Uh, uh, the, the one that I show in the paper is simply the, the partisan differences in thermometer ratings of the parties and the candidates over time. They, uh, they reach a peak in, uh, in, in 2012. Um, and the, the, the question that I address in the paper is, is did the partisan uh, news and opinion media have anything to do with the degree of polarization, if not the increase in polarization, at least the degree of polarization in 2012? Um, what we know from prior research, including research by people in this room, that uh, the multiplication of media options fragmented the, uh, the media audiences, that uh, in terms of uh, news and opinion media, people self-select selected themselves, uh, not entirely, but to a large degree, into attending media that were consistent with their, with their partisan points of view, if so if it was partisan media. Uh, and there is some, at least experimental and other evidence, that attendance to the media does reinforce uh, one's partisan priors uh, in ways that are, are uh, identifiable. Uh, as it turns out, using a single cross-sectional study, you can't really demonstrate an effect of this sort. But what you can show is that, that number one, there's a uh, 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 selective uh, selection into the audience is, is very powerful, that as it happens. Uh, number two, that the relationship between one's use of partisan media and one's uh, attitudes across a broad range of issues is very strong. And then um, there's some ad in, uh, additional evidence suggesting that even if you control for everything you can that might explain the selection of party partisan news media, there are residual effects of having attended to the partisan media. And that's sort of the structure of what my what my paper does. Uh, in terms of self-selection, um, the media sources that NES asked, asked about, I classified into liberal, conservative, and mainstream. Um, it's pretty straightforward to do. Uh, the identifications are pretty obvious. Um, selective attention is, is also very obvious here. Uh, for the conservative media, 83% or 84% of the audience is Republican, 12% Democratic. Um, for uh, liberal sources, it's about 69% Democrats, 25% Republicans. There's some variation um, in terms of particular outlets, but I talk about them in the paper. I don't have time to do that now. Uh, and then mainstream media, the attendance is a little bit more uh, Democratic than, than the national average, uh, but tends to be sort of distributed broadly among, uh, among all the folks. Um, I then uh, cr created some indexes, a couple of indexes out of these uh, news media uh, usage. One index for each medium, uh, each type, conservative, liberal, and mainstream. I have uh, truncated the number of uh, things you could attend at four, so a zero to four scale for media attendance. And then for partisan media, I, I sub subtracted uh, the number of Republican uh, or number of conservative sources from the number of liberal sources to get a scale that goes from four to four conservative sources and no liberal sources to minus four, four liberal sources and no conservative sources, four or more. Uh, the four is just the truncated end. Uh, and I, again, it's child's play to show po polarization based on uh, media, uh, the attendance to partisan media. This is approval of Obama Obama's performance. Uh, gets worse and worse, the more conservative, uh, uh, lower and lower, the more conservative media you attend to. Belief that he's an extreme liberal uh, this is the, the most moderate Democratic president in, uh, in NES, or in, uh, in, in Poole Rosenthal, um, uh, is an extreme liberal. It takes that form. You ask the question about beliefs about Obama's birthplace and religion. Uh, the the uh, partisan media attendance is strongly related to birtherism and belief that he's a Muslim. Um, belief in human-induced climate change, uh, or the ACA con uh, contains death panels, two kinds of um, highly uh, uh, partisan and uh, political uh, sets of beliefs. Uh, these days, very strong relationship between media attendance uh, and beliefs in these two things. Uh, beliefs about the economy, um, was it better or worse over the past year? It actually was better, not by a hell of a lot, but it was better by 
any standard measure. Um, uh, and then the question of whether the Obama administration favors blacks over whites. Again, you get very strong uh, relationship here. Um, opinions of Obamacare, uh, positive or negative. That's a, if you want a picture of polarization, there it is. Um, and then uh, gun control. There are not, not too many people even on the right uh, who want less gun control because evidently we, we've gotten pretty far. Although Georgia, Georgia yeah, there, those are all Georgians. <laughs> More gun control, uh, uh, and, uh, very few on the, uh, who attend uh, conservative media want more gun control. Uh, what I then did was say, all right, uh, can I uh, try to distinguish these results from self-selection into the audiences? Is this, is this, is this simply at all, uh, all a, uh, a matter of uh, uh, the, the right-wing media get right, gets right-wingers who give right-wing responses, or did the me attendance of the media have any difference? So what I did was to try to uh, estimate um, or, or try to control for the missing variables here, um, the kind of variables that would explain the percent propensity to choose one sort of uh, media over another. And the six variables I used were partisanship, ideology, opinion of the Tea Party, uh, the, uh, the uh, moral traditionalism scale, the egalitarian scale, uh, and the uh, um, racial resentment scale. Those are four, three standard scales that have, NES has had for a long time. So controlling for those characteristics of the voter, uh, uh, the, these are all voters, um, uh, what happens to the relationship between uh, uh, media attendance and, uh, uh, and, and opinions. And clearly when you make those controls, control for self-selection, uh, some of the coefficients cease to become significant. All of them are smaller, uh, but they don't go away. Uh, they don't go away entirely. And they, don't go, they, they go away less somewhat for people who <coughs> attend to the conservative media. Um, uh, and this is uh, using the same data to look at the polarized, the, the size of the difference between people at minus four and plus four on this scale, um, pre, uh, predicted by their media attend, or using that to predict uh, their opinion, uh, their attitudes toward Obama, all that list of things that we looked at uh, in, the, in the graphs. Uh, and it turns out that once you, with these controls, the, the uh, degree of polarization, the gap between, between people at the, uh, on, on these things becomes smaller but it doesn't, again, disappear, except for the, uh, the birtherism and Obama's a Muslim. That seems to be to totally a, uh, a function of people self-selecting themselves into particular media. It's not affected by the media that they, that they watch. Okay, to get a, in a more detailed way, I took two, two, two measures. These are the net partisan, uh, uh, net thermometer evaluations of Romney and Obama and of the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. So how much more positive were they toward, uh, toward Obama than Romney, and how much more positive uh, toward the Democrats than the Republicans according to their, um, uh, their place on this uh, uh, media use index. And as you can see, again, there's this kind of strong polarization, more for the candidates than for the parties. Uh, I then uh, did, uh, went to the individual uh, uh, folks uh, and looked at the, uh, the size of that gap according to whether or not you attended to any of these folks or any of these news sources, and then with and without controls for both the party and for the, for the, uh, for the presidential differences. And you find out that, uh, of course, uh, without the controls, you have huge differences in the evaluations. Uh, this is among conservatives. With controls, those differences become much smaller, but they don't disappear. They remain conservative. Um, f for controlling for self-selection into attendance to, to conservative media, uh, if, you, if you watch the Fox guys, you're about 10 degrees colder, or the, the gap is about 10 degrees more favoring Romney over, over Obama, uh, rather than Obama over Romney. Uh, uh, for the parties, the, the, the difference is smaller. Uh, a number of them uh, still you know, retain uh, statistical significance. Among liberal sources, uh, once you control for uh, self-selection, there's nothing. Uh, there's very little. Uh, the only coefficients that are still significant um, I think there's only two out of the five are, uh, or the, maybe five, they all, the, two of them have the wrong sign. Um, uh, the two that have the right sign are relatively small. Mainstream I don't even show because once you control for self-selection in the mainstream, there's no effect uh, on any of those variables for any of the mainstream sources. Uh, and then another thing I looked at because, this, because it was available and it was interesting, how am I doing? Good. Okay, uh, was, was <laughs> expectations about who was gonna win the election. And the reason this was interesting is because the right-wing punditry uh, kind of got into a groupthink mode before the election and decided 
that, uh, that Romney was going to win, and a number of them said he was going to win by a lot, 300, 300 uh, um, uh, electoral votes or more. Uh, they all convinced themselves that this was, was going to be the case, or at least none of them wanted to be, appear to be on the outside, not joining into this, uh, this particular kind of groupthink. And it turns out that uh, the people who attended um, the more conservative media, uh, who initially, well, back up a minute, people tend to think that the guy they're going to vote for is going to win. There's a pretty strong tendency in that direction. So taking that into account, taking the expectation, who you're going to vote for into account, the expectations for people who plan to vote for Romney uh, of his victory were higher the more uh, uh, of the conservative media outlets they, uh, they attended. For Democrats, or people who planned to vote for Obama, it didn't make any difference. Uh, they, they, uh, news media didn't make a difference at all. Um, Try to see whether or not this um, was simply a function of partisanship and the, <coughs> and the plan to vote for, the, for, for Romney, since we know that people who plan to vote for someone think he's going to win. Um, uh, and it turns out that if you, if you uh, tr throw that into a regression equation, the media use index is still significant. Um, and if you add the Romney-Obama thermometer difference, which we know is really big um, uh, and which is going to strongly affect one's how much they care about who's going to win and the, the kind of incentives to really believe that your guy is going to win, um, even if you control for that, there's a small effect, additional effect of news media on, on, uh, on expectations. I then, uh, of course, quickly looked at the effect on vote choice. Uh, uh, and the, int the, the, the main thing to look at for this, other than the fact that as, uh, as the media choice, uh, th this has this switched around a little bit. So it's uh, plus four is four on your side. Uh, and minus four is four on the other side. So Republicans, uh, I changed the sign for Democrats, basically. Uh, very, and then in the parentheses below each column, I give the proportion of the respondents in that category. And I put that in because it's really important. You see that so few people are heavy attendants of media on the other side. Uh, but of those who do attend to media on the other side, they were less uh, likely to be loyal to their party in the, in the presidential election. Uh, under controls uh, uh, for 14 different other things that might affect the presidential vote choice, uh, attendance to the media still matters. Uh, as long as you leave out um, the thermometer difference, which is uh, almost perfectly collinear with the vote, or Obama approval, which is almost collinear with the vote. vote. But even if you put both of those in, in you get a, a almost significant effect on media usage. Um, so. I see this as kind of generally uh, not entirely convincing, but pretty compelling circumstantial evidence that media use has an effect. Uh, and I kind of nailed it down in my own mind by looking at the variation across, across the kinds of issues where media effects seem to, seem to occur and where they didn't. Because it turns out if you look at the things where you find pretty good effect, big, big effects, they're on approval of Obama, on, on whether Obama's, how liberal Obama is, on uh, uh, on gl climate change uh, and on um, uh, 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 death panels. Mm -hmm. uh, and these were all things where the conservative and liberal media were pretty noisy about and took opposite sides. Uh, and, for some, and then you look at something like, um, is Bo uh, where was Obama born? Is he a Muslim? You look at the conservative media, at least the Fox News folks, they weren't claiming that. Uh, in fact, Bill O'Reilly was trashing, saying, you know, trashing the birthers, saying these are, these are, this is a plot by the Democrats to make us all look crazy. Uh, so so, uh, so they, they didn't emphasize that. So the things that the media were emphasizing on their side tended to show up as having affected opinion were things that um, were not emphasized by the media or even de-emphasized by the media. Uh, particular items on that tend not to have uh, a media effect. So. My, uh, my bottom line is that, yeah, uh, the partisan media did contribute uh, appreciably, not hugely, but appreciably to the level of, extreme level of polarization in the electorate uh, in 2012. Do I have another minute? Or am I done? I'll, I'll give you one minute. Well, it's, it's, not, it's, it's, a, it's, a mi it's not a minor coda. It's sort of the central to this, to this <laughs> enterprise here. Uh, this election, therefore, produced an a, a, a Congress uh, whose whose voters are, uh, whose electoral constituents, that is the people who said they voted for the winning Republicans in the House. Uh, this, 
you know, 84% of them disapprove of Obama. About 45% of them think he's foreign born. About 45% of them think he's a Muslim. They all hate the ADA. Um, and ACA. ACA. They all they fight the ADA too. <laughs> <laughs> they, all hate, they all hate the ACA. Uh, and uh, and there's the, the degree of overlap of voters, people who, in the Republican coalition, people who voted for the winning Republicans and who voted for Obama was about 15%, which is the lowest overlap of electoral constituents for a president and the opposite party in Congress ever. So uh, all of this sort of adds, adds up to increasing the, the propensity for gridlock and polarization in Congress. Thank you.